parts of the world, mostly in uh, New Zealand. I guess the, um, uh, I guess the, the manufacturer of the treadmill is from New Zealand. I don't know, but the, anyway, they have this journey run, and uh, one of them is going to this Berthes Garden in Wimba Klam, and now I am here in reality, so to speak. Me and my wife. He's further up the stairs. This is in uh, Bayern, in the uh, southernmost part of uh, Germany. Okay, let's go. You know, when you make a trip like this, it's, uh, you know, you look for the, the weather forecast, and in this case, it looked looked pretty poor. You know, was, today was supposed to be poor and rain here, but uh, we haven't seen any of the rain so far. Uh, we will try to make another, go to another club, another gorge in the Capri where we'll be staying tonight. So, let's maybe record a little bit more there. We are in the south of Germany, in the south of Bavaria actually. It's just in a little bit of a loop down. We have Austria on both sides. We actually were, we were actually in a hotel in the, the small town of Agrain uh, last night. And then we're going back again to, now we've been in Germany and now we're going back again to Austria. Mostly we've been using, I've been using this uh, Via Michelin uh, app, you know, trying to, to find the discovery routes. We're trying to stay away from the from the motorways. Here, both in Germany and, and in Austria, you know, the roads are great. <coughs> uh, sometimes like this, it's like 100 kilometers an hour speed limit here, and you know, which is if this was a road in Sweden, it would be 60 kilometers an hour. So, uh, of course, as you can see, you know, we're not driving. 100 kilometers an hour, you know, we, you know, the, you know, they, they let the drivers, they rely on the, on the ability of the drivers to decide what is a suitable speed. You know, we bought the cheapest navigator before our last road trip, so it's like this, uh, maybe around 100 euro TomTom, -tom, which it's not, it's not bad. It's working fine, but uh, uh, it's not really like, giving us any real time updates. We got stuck in a few small cities actually just uh, you know we had to try to figure the figure how to get out of the cities yeah, again. so I will switch to that uh, 3d 3d uh, or to the 2d two-dimensional map because I like to have the north up orientation so I see where we're actually going uh, this 3d uh, I don't really I don't I think it's for children what can you say about the car? Well, it's uh, smooth as ever, really nice to drive. Uh, low fuel consumption. Of course, when you're out, out like this, when you're driving in the mountains and when you're driving on the outbound, you, you kind of feel like, you know, it's not, it's not a weak car in any respect, you know, it's, it's got enough power, but it's sometimes you feel, especially when it's going uphill or, or, yeah most like that or like when you do long uh, when you go long distances like this you really feel like you would like to have a bigger engine you know it would be nice with that with another 100 horsepower and it would also be nice to have an automatic gearbox so if you're going uphill if it's really steep and then you uh, change the gear from from first to second or, or uh, from uh, second and third and then you really feel that you're losing most of the speed you've built up on the previous gear you lose when you change the gear because it takes too long time to change the gear so uh, now we're at the Sigmund uh, Gorge uh, in uh, Kapun, Austria We have been down to Croatia and uh, up, we, and then uh, we went to Lake Garda. We stayed, uh, just stayed three nights at uh, uh, 
Riva del Garda, uh, northernmost part of uh, Lake Garda, and now we are on the way down towards Maranello. We actually planned to stay only two nights, but we had such a great, um, great stay, great uh, room, so we extended one night. So we stayed, stayed three nights, and now we're going down this beautiful road uh, uh, towards Maranello. Maranello Nu ska vi se här Den var den här Villa Här är det Här är det Här tror jag att det är Okay, so we're on the way from uh, Maranello to going down to uh, Pisa. Just want to have a look at this uh, leaning tower of Pisa, and then we're going to go up and uh, sleep in Savona uh, before crossing the border to uh, France tomorrow, or Monaco, France. Uh, yeah, quite a nice morning. We had a Good stay, very good stay at the in the Maranello, a small nice uh, hotel uh, with perfect dinner. And uh, while the Ferrari Museum was uh, was good, not that uh, you know it's not that I would go there again, you know, for, for uh, but uh, if someday uh, uh, we have the money to buy a Ferrari, which is will most likely not happen, then. Uh, We'll probably go to Maranello again and pick it up. Uh, never mind. So uh, beautiful here. We, we are, I'm using this uh, Via Michelin application on the on the mobile phone for uh, discovery route. You know, you go, you get to these places. You know, you go through these small villages, villages, and uh, so on. That you you would never go if you didn't use this discovery mode you would just have to you know take the fastest uh, uh, fastest uh, route somewhere and usually the that is the motorways and it's not so fun to drive on them so this is really nice uh, roads here in Italy so so quite a lot of uh, I wouldn't call it puddles they're just cracked quite a lot but uh, still it's uh, good fun to drive on them and uh, you know, I remember when I was younger, you know, everybody said people are driving so crazily in Italy. I don't know, I don't think that people are driving so crazy, crazily here, but uh, never know, we're, we're not, we're not finished with Italy yet, so. Now, one thing, if I, uh, if I am to say something negative about this car and about, uh, what's the same thing with my previous 156 I had a few years back is that you know the there's no the power how should we put it when you give gas there's like a glitch between no gas and a little bit too much gas you know there's no there's no way of easily you know uh, being smooth 
for example, if you go downhill, right, and then you want to, you know, you want to let go of the gas, not to speed, and then there's this boo and then boo. If you if you if you come when you come on the power, it doesn't come smoothly. That's what I want to say. You know, when you're in the lower gears and you, you gear up or down, you get the old, it's very unsmooth, you know, and it's that in combination with the combination with um, with the turbo lag, which you always have when you have a turbo, you know, this and especially with the diesel because the diesel, you know, it's got quite a lot of torque, you know, so it kind of the turbo when the turbo kicks in. It's a, so it's, I mean, it takes a long time to get, I mean, to get used to driving this car smoothly, I think. And now we've had it for more than five years, and I still, I think, I'm still not, you know, still haven't perfected it. So, uh, like this, you know, when you gear down, you gear down, you want to meet the gap, you want to meet, and then you get the, uh, it's really annoying. Uh, I think most people they don't care about this, but but I really like to drive smoothly. I don't, I don't mind to drive a little bit fast, you know, like on, on roads like this. But I, I want I want to still want to drive smoothly, you know. You should be comfortable for for the passengers to go with you. And what you what you have to if you if you if you haven't driven an Alfa Romeo before, it will take a short while for you to get used to the to the fast steering ratio because you don't. I mean, really, in the beginning, you will. Uh, you will dive into the corners too fast, but you get used to that quite fast, and then it's very nice because you don't have to you don't move, have to move the wheel a lot to turn. So it's got nice. Okay, so we're in Portofino, uh, just uh, taking a little bit, uh, taking a sightseeing tour on our way to Savona, where we will be spending the night. So the road is quite tight. Uh, it's actually beautiful, beautiful views from here. You know, you cannot really see it maybe from here, but Got a small cruise ship anchored out here in the bay. It's one of the Windstar cruiser ships, I believe. Uh, never mind. Okay, so we just uh, went through the small uh, uh, village or of uh, Gréolière in uh, in uh, southern France, just uh, south of the uh, French, uh, north of the French Riviera. Uh, we spent the night in Antibes, 
and now we're on the on this uh, D2. Okay, so we had a quick stop. Let's see how the how the road is. Uh, it's a good road because there's not so many cars or, or vehicles, so and it's quite wide. So actually, uh, yeah, a few motorcycles. Wow, I went to be too Shit. Ah, this is beautiful. Don't want to run off, off the road now. So, uh, thank you vlogger, uh, seen through glass, or seen through glass, uh, for, um, for uh, recommending this, this road, it's actually great, you know, it's actually very great. Alright, and now we are in uh, Bourgogne, France, and uh, we're driving along this, um, Grand route de vin. Route de vin. Route de vin de Bourgogne. Uh, route de grand uh, de grand vin. Grand vin. <laughs> route de grand vin in uh, Bourgogne, in uh, Burgundy, France. Uh, yeah. A little bit tricky to actually find the to find the this route, you know. The, when there, when you come to cross section of the road, it's not there's not really any sign <laughs> of what direction they go. So you really have to be working with the, with the, some uh, you know uh, 
names of uh, places along the route and your uh, navigator to actually get to the wrong, to right the correct place. But at the moment we are um, on the right track, so to speak. So the cities here in, the, or the small villages or towns here in uh, in Bourgogne, they have rather. brutal speed bumps so if you have a low car if you are, have a sports car then you might have some problems of clearing the uh, the bumps but uh, for us it's been okay so far okay so uh, now we're on the autobahn we're on the back home back north uh, quite a good speed actually uh, around 160 kilometers an hour last gear, the sixth gear of this car is very high, so actually it's uh, it works pretty fine with this speed. And it's good fun to something, you know, something like if you drive like this at home, uh, of course, as in any other country except for Germany, you know, you would be a criminal, but here you're, you're free to free to go, so to speak. As long as you keep the distance and uh, look well ahead then it's, it's no problem with the, the course. It's also different. It's a difference between driving 170 kilometers an hour and driving 250 which is uh, then you know then it's completely different uh, driving which I have never done so uh, anyway enjoy uh, stretching out sometimes once in a while. Okay, so uh, after almost, well, we started in Luxembourg nine o'clock, almost exactly in the morning. It's now uh, four thirty in the morning, so we've been been on the road for nineteen and a half hours. Finally home, uh, about one thousand eight hundred kilometers, almost. Uh, yeah, here we are. Back home. Thank you.